Hello friends, we have gone through a long and marathon journey of Six Sigma. We have discussed the various topics in greater detail, many complicated topics as well as interesting topics we have seen critically. Now, you would be extremely happy as a student if I say this is the last lecture of the course. So, a student would always be happy when a teacher says this is the last lecture and I will close the course with this particular lecture. So, this is where we are. So, lecture 63 we will just have a quick revision what we achieved try to have a sense of accomplishment because again it is a kind of Six Sigma project executing an online course and we must derive a pride in learning executing our interest and knowledge on various topics of Six Sigma. So, let me give you a beautiful inspiration quality is not an act it is a habit Aristotle. I have specifically preserved this statement for the last lecture the reason is you cannot understand Six Sigma just by listening the video lectures you have to revise this video lectures you also have to refer the books suggested and most importantly you must execute some sigma project may be hypothetical data set or may be the real data set in industry and then only you can make six sigma as your habit so quality is not an act you just learn once and then you say that i am a six sigma it never happens it is a continuous journey and you must create a habit of achieving acquiring implementing the knowledge and this is where we are at the last lecture of the course. So, I would just like to remind you that we had started this journey and we were interested to study Six Sigma because quality is an obsession. It is a compulsion. If you have to survive, then quality is basically a qualifying factor, it is not a winning factor. If I tell somebody that I purchase a product because it is quality product nobody will be interested people will say what is that extraordinary this product offers because every product should be a quality product so quality has become a qualifying criteria and you must ensure the competitive quality standard and hence it is an obsession global economy will not exempt you if you do not operate at four sigma five sigma six sigma which is the benchmark international standard and you will miserably fail in your business. You have seen the shift in the paradigm, old paradigm concentrated on specifications, external customer product quality, new paradigm says talk about satisfaction of customer needs and expectation, capture the voice of customer. Do not only think about external, your internal customers are equally important and product quality, process quality and service quality all these three must be appropriately integrated then only you can say that I am a world class company. The philosophy we have seen is like this, this is the old belief which says that high quality is high cost, I will put across. The new says that high quality is low cost and the reason is very simple. You can just see how this particular cow shifts. So, this is basically prevention and appraisal cost. If you have better control over your processes, variability has gone down, then your prevention and appraisal cost will definitely go down. When you are at Six Sigma, you can see that your cost has break even cost has shifted to a very very low level and you can really achieve a best quality at a low cost. So, this is what we have appreciated by discussing the various phases of Six Sigma. 
So, you should not forget the definition, the spirit of Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a problem solving technology that uses human assets, data, measurements and statistics to identify the vital few factors to decrease waste and defects while increasing customer satisfaction, profit and shareholders value. So, it has a very big perspective to address. It is not only about applying DMAIC, but with a very bigger perspective, we try to execute the Six Sigma project. So, what is Six Sigma? It is a philosophy introduced by Motorola in 1986. General Electric has reaped the extraordinary advantages in 1995. Many Indian organizations, as I mentioned, Maruti, Tata Steel, Tata Motors, LNT. So, all these are the organizations located in India as well as global presence. They have realized the immense benefit of Six Sigma and typically it is a methodology which is heavily driven on fact based management, statistical variability, control and the use of statistic is extraordinary. So, Six Sigma in a more technical term I would say that I want to achieve a Six Sigma and a process must not produce more than 3.4 defects per million opportunity. When I achieve this, I will say that my process has reached to the Six Sigma and 3.4 defects per million is just like say 99.99996 percent probability that only 3.4 defects will be produced which is almost 0. So, there are certain prerequisites and if you recall we discussed as a part of our first two week discussion that you must have an open culture, you must have an organization ready to change and you must have a specific structure like DMAIC to operate with. So, why Six Sigma is a best in class say change strategy for accelerating improvement in process and products and services. So, this figure which we discussed right at the beginning, I would like to remind you that you have the voice of customer, you have the business case, find the focus on the customer as source of process quality and understand the business reasons for process and change and use data to drive decision. When you complete this particular spiral, you will say that Six Sigma is really a strategy to bring significant improvement and change in the existing processes of the organization. So, this is a change strategy which addresses the three pillars. So, the difference between failure and success is doing a thing nearly right and doing exactly right and this is what Edward Simmons says. So, when I talk about Six Sigma, I talk about perfection, I talk about doing the things exactly right, not the nearly right. So, this is about Six Sigma. So, Motorola launched Six Sigma method in 1986-1987 and also the first firm to win the Malcolm Baldrige award in 1988. So, you can see that it can bring, Six Sigma can bring many laurels to your company by having the excellent control over your processes. Many organizations in India, G, Wipro, Tata Steel, Telco, Ocean Paints, Whirlpool, LG and VIP, Tata Honeywell, Tata Consultancy, PD Light, they have reaped the outstanding benefits of Six Sigma. Now, we want to wrap up this course and let us try to see when we talk about DMAIC at the end we always try to introspect and see that to what extent we have achieved our goals. We had set our goals right at the beginning of this course and in terms of the deliverables of this course how we have achieved this. So, this course has provided an in depth and critical understanding on Six Sigma methodology DMAIC. I can assure you that the course is developed based on the ASQ 
American Society for Quality and International Body recommended book and if you go through this course and satisfy the prerequisite stipulated by ASQ then you can definitely clear the black belt certification for Six Sigma obviously for that you have to satisfy the prerequisite for two projects Six Sigma project and you have to appear in the exam. So, such exam schedule is available on the net and ASQ they conduct this exam yearly you will have four or five slots to appear and I assure you that the course you have studied is adequate enough to appear and clear this exam. So, this course has included in order to achieve the objectives and as a deliverable this is the book which we have followed which is recommended by American Society for Quality and it is a black belt book TM Quebec and Donald W the certified Six Sigma black belt book I can assure you that the content we have covered is even more than what is uh, being given in this book but obviously we have followed the structure but we have gone into the greater and greater detail of each topic as a part of this particular course. So, the course delivered as a part of NPTEL, a government of initiative, India initiative, Six Sigma can assure you the world class standard in terms of say black belt requirement given by the American Society for Quality and you can trust and ensure that by going through this course systematically you are well equipped to appear in any such kind of examination. So, what we have delivered quality fundamentals and key concepts week 1, week 2. So, this is all about creating my organization for the Six Sigma. So, week 1 we have talked about lecture 1 brief overview of the course then quality concepts as a part of lecture 2 definition of the quality and what are the different imperatives for the organization then lecture 3 history of continuous improvement how it has evolved in last 100 to 120 years then lecture 4 six sigma principles and focus areas part 1 very very important lecture we talked about the difference between three sigma and six sigma and shift in quality paradigm and so on we talked about as a part of lecture 5 six sigma principles part 2 and very important concepts we have discussed roll through pool yield classic yield first pass yield hidden factory six sigma roles and responsibility lecture 6 we had seen couple of applications of six sigma so that you feel energetic and motivated to learn this course and many organizations they have implemented this philosophy six sigma and received the immense benefit in terms of process improvement. Week 2 we have delivered lecture 7 quality management say basics and key concepts fundamentals of total quality management we talked in lecture 8 lecture 9 was very important on cost of quality unless you made the measure the quality in terms of cost prevention cost appraisal cost internal failure external failure you can not really say trigger the thrive or movement for the change and the improvement. So, this is where you can draw the attention of the top management. Then voice of customer which is the heart of Six Sigma and that we discussed as a part of lecture 10. Lecture 11 was QFD quality function deployment. You do not only capture the voice of the customer, you try to relate it with the technical requirement, use it for the benchmark and this is where we had done the lecture 11. Lecture 12 was on management and planning tools part 1 and lecture 13 was management and planning tools part 2. We have discussed many many tools that can really help us to dig out into the problem and figure out that what is really causing the problem. So, we have seen various tools like maybe affinity diagram, tree diagram, process decision program chart then activity network diagram, pace prioritization matrix, force field analysis and so on. Then we entered into the defined phase and we delivered say typically the content of defined phase in week 3. So, week 3 we talked about Six Sigma project identification, 
selection and definition as a part of lecture 14 lecture 15 project charter and monitoring you have to define you have to fix your bible then only you can seek the commitment of the people and the top management then lecture 16 process characteristics and analysis lecture 17 very important tool for process mapping SIPOC. Then we entered into the second phase that is M stands for measure and we delivered the content specific to measure phase in week 4 and week 5. So, week 4 we talked about in lecture 18 data collection and summarization part 1, lecture 19 data collection and summarization part 2 and we had seen the various concepts like population and sample, Pareto diagram, histogram, bar chart and say box and whisker plot and many other things. Lecture 20 measurement system fundamentals, if your system is not accurate and precise, garbage in, garbage out follows. Lecture 21 gauge r and study which is the heart of analyzing the precision of your measurement system. Lecture 22 fundamentals of statistics and we have talked about the central limit theorem, shape of the distribution and other concepts and 23 probability theory. I would emphasize that if you really want to appreciate this course, you must have some knowledge of the statistics right at the beginning even though we have covered some of the concepts as a part of lecture 22 and 23. Now, we have entered into week 5 and then we delivered as a part of lecture 24 process capability analysis. I must know whether my process is capable or not if I am having a very poor process, very poor capability process then first I need to enhance the capability of the process through necessary adjustment or the upgradation and then I can think about the other measures. We talked about various process capability indices like CP, CPK, CPM, PP, PPK, PPM as a part of lecture 25. Lecture 26 delivered process capability analysis in Minitab for helping the professionals as well as university students for executing the projects and lecture 27 was on non-normal process capability where we have discussed the concept as well as Minitab application for non-normal process capability. Then we entered into the analyze phase, we delivered the content of analyze phase in week 6 and week 7. So, week 6 was about hypothesis testing, I want to check my claim on a scientific basis, statistical basis and this was lecture 28. I can do hypothesis testing for one population or single population or two population and I can also have the mini tab application. This part was covered in lecture 29, 30 and 31. Lecture 32, we deliberated on correlation and regression analysis and lecture 33, we went into the various line assumption verification, linearity, independence, normality, equal variance for validating my regression model. Then week 7, we delivered one way ANOVA. I cannot be happy with the multiple uh, say paired comparison by t-test. I need to have a mechanism which can help me to reduce my type 1 error and this is where I will go for ANOVA which can compare more than 2 or 3 means simultaneously and I deal with basically the variability within group between group and I discuss the concept of one way ANOVA. I may have two factors say of interest on which I want to analyze the impact and this is where uh, the impact of these two factor I want to analyze on the response variable. So, productivity may be governed by the moral of the employee as well as the state of the technology. I have two factors and I conducted the two way ANOVA analysis. Then lecture 36, I did multivary analysis, this can be used as a screening tool. I cannot handle too many factors in ANOVA. So, if I have the descriptive tool like multivary analysis, which basically talks about temporal, cyclical and positional factors, I can really reduce my number of factors and then I can conduct the ANOVA analysis. Lecture 37 was on FMEA, failure, mode, effect, analysis 
it is all about multiplying severity detectability and occurrence rate probability so i will get rpn and then i can have risk mitigation and management strategies then we entered into the fourth uh, say fifth phase after dma that is the fourth phase improve phase of my dma ic cycle and we delivered the content in week 8 and week 9 so week 8 we delivered introduction to design of experiment and the definition of some of the key terms like factor treatment label blocking randomization replication repetition then we talked about the randomized block design as a part of lecture 39 and we have seen couple of examples also lecture 40 i demonstrated the mini tab application for the convenience and focusing more on the interpretation part lecture 41 factorial design i also want to consider the interaction effect and subsequently i demonstrated the mini tab application for factorial design week 9 we continued in the phase of impro and we talked about as a part of lecture 43 fractional factorial design i cannot have the resources to conduct the full factorial and i need to have some mechanism by which i can reduce the size of the experimentation without compromising with the quality of analysis so this is possible when i consider the confounding effect and alias structure by defining a generator or relationship and i can really reduce the number of factors number of experiments to be considered so if i have 2 raised to 3 full factorial 8 i can go for half factorial 2 raised to 3 minus 1 we have seen the concept of resolution and uh, how it affects my quality of experimentation so that was covered in fractional factorial followed by that lecture 45 gave you the mini tab application lecture 45 was on taguchi method key concepts lecture 46 demonstrated an application of taguchi method finally we entered into the last phase of dmaic that is the control and we delivered this particular content of control phase in week 10 and 11 so week 10 was on 7 qc tool i have parato diagram histogram scattered plot and most importantly say i have control chart and others lecture 48 we entered into the statistical process control with key concept what is the chance cause what is the assignable cause when i can say that my process has shifted what is type 1 error what is type 2 error and so on then lecture 49 i deliberated on statistical process control control chart design for variable quantity then control chart operating characteristic curve which is the performance measure of the control chart for variables we discussed in lecture 50 subsequently in lecture 51 we have seen the design of control chart for attributes and lecture 52 we have seen the operating characteristic curve for attribute control chart lecture 53 was mini tab application for spc for students doing project or industry professionals week 11 again was specific to control phase and as i mentioned statistical quality control has two pillars one is statistical process control other is acceptance sampling we devoted week 11 and the lecture 54 55 6 57 and 58 on acceptance sampling 54 provided you the key concepts on producers risk consumers risk evaluation of sampling plan advantages disadvantages 58 was part one on design of acceptance sampling plan for attributes i talked about the design of single sampling plan double sampling plan multiple sampling plan and then we entered into the lecture 56 this is design of attribute sampling plan part two so here we talked about say standard sampling plan and as a part of that we have seen ansi asq military standard and the damming kp rule lecture 57 was design of acceptance sampling plan for variables and we have talked about the various advantages disadvantages 
variable sampling plan for a process parameter we have considered three cases case number one my <coughs> say up only single specification limit and the variance or standard deviation is known case two two specification limit i am considering and the standard deviation or variance of the process is known and third when i am dealing with single specification limit but my standard deviation of the process is unknown so we have discussed the, these three cases in detail lecture 58 was mini tab application for the convenience of the industry people and then we entered into the week 12 that was the final one six sigma implementation challenges and as a part of that we talked about design for six sigma dma dv dma dov dfx various x maintainability reliability testability robustness and many more we have seen as a part of dfx then we talked about a very interesting and important issue that is the team management six sigma projects are executed in team and you need to understand the team dynamics formation of the team roles of the team communication requirement and so on finally in 62 i have discussed a small case study to give you confidence in executing dmaic cycle for a chosen company or industry and process and lecture 63 we are just wrapping up uh, as a part of this and i am giving you the whole idea about the deliverable of this course so i acknowledge here and i sincerely acknowledge uh, the people who are involved in this particular course who has really helped me for executing this course and extending the content to my students university student industry professionals so first i acknowledge the contributions of my teaching assistants Rishabh Rathod, Vivekanand Mishra and Amit Kumar in the development of this particular course material. I am thankful to Mr. Anantham and team who have extensively supported the video recording of this course. They are part of Center of Education Technology IIT Kharagpur and they provided sincere extended support many a times they had gone beyond and even up to 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the night they have helped me to record this course. I thank NPTEL National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning for offering this Six Sigma course for the benefit of the potential university student as well as industry professional and NPTEL I will just like to mention is a joint initiative of IITs and ISC which offers online courses and certification in various topics. I would like to present my disclaimer. This course is developed based on the suggested references and textbooks and the concepts written in these textbooks and the references are extensively used. Even some of the examples illustrated in this book are discussed as a part of this online course and every effort is made to acknowledge the sources either from the textbook or internet even if by chance something is forgotten then i acknowledge all the authors who have really contributed in the domain of six sigma and helped me in developing and delivering this course for the benefit of my students which are spreaded across the country not across the country internationally so i would like to share my personal details for any future help if i can extend or any collaboration we can have for executing the six sigma project so i am dr jitesh jethakkar i am with department of industrial and systems engineering indian institute of technology kharagpur kharagpur uh, is located in west bengal and uh, my educational qualification includes PhD in supply chain management from IIT Delhi. I did my MTech in industrial engineering from IIT Delhi and I did my B that is bachelors of engineering in mechanical with gold medal from the oldest government engineering college in Gujarat Birla Vishwakarma Mahavidyalai 
associated with Sardar Patel University. My areas of expertise include Six Sigma project management, supply chain sustainability and service operations management. You can see my uh, CV and my contributions in this field at this particular link and you can see all my publications. You can also refer this link Google Scholar where you will get all my publications with citations and you can also pick the one which is suitable for your requirement or receiving the good citation for your reference. So, I, I can uh, help you uh, in executing the Six Sigma project and if you have my details we can really collaborate. This is my brief publication profile during last say 15 years I tried to publish in the top notch journals of operations management. This includes journal of cleaner production with an impact factor 5.651, international journal of production economics 4.407, expert system with applications, computers and industrial engineering, resource policy, international journal of production research, international journal of advanced manufacturing technology, production planning and control and journal of manufacturing technology management, operations research, international journal of logistic management, Asia Pacific journal of marketing and logistics and international journal of quality and reliability management and finally, international journal of productivity and performance management. So, you will find my articles published in all these journals and you can easily refer them and mainly I have demonstrated the case based approach. So, that would really be beneficial to industry people as well as university students. This is just the statistics, we work on the fact based management, we are Six Sigma people. So, this is just the classification of my papers and I evolved as a researcher and I tried to publish say more number of papers as I advanced from 2006 to 2018. I have addressed supply chain sustainability and published some 21 papers, Lean Six Sigma 14 papers, scheduling 6 service operations management 4, risk management 5, project management 3 and e-business 2. You can also see that I have addressed the industry context like manufacturing, SME, agriculture, infrastructure, automotive, education, healthcare and petroleum. So, I tried to say analyze the manufacturing as well as service context in order to evolve my research in the different dimensions. And I have used various methodologies because we are tool driven people, analytic people. So, multi criteria decision making I have published 21 papers, optimizations, integer programming and others, literature review and conceptual couple of papers are there, case study, innovative frameworks I have proposed like I2 NOC is one of the framework, 4 bar linkage mechanism you will find I derived the analogy from the mechanical engineering and empirical survey and simulation and system dynamics. So, this is my brief uh, publication profile. You can always visit Google Scholar or my CV at the suggested link and you can go through in detail the titles of the paper and the context whatever you might be interested in. So, thank you very much. The departure is always painful even though I am not connected to you directly, but it is an emotional binding I carry and I really feel overwhelmed in delivering this course and I would certainly like to see that if I can help you in any way during the execution of this course or even after the execution of this course, I would be extremely happy. I wish you all the best for executing Six Sigma project, for your personal projects, for your professional career and I wish that you all grow well in your personal and professional life, wish you all the best.